William, I got the berries. Ha, I got the brews. And we got the barbecue. The only thing missing is you. And a new episode of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. We are out here at French Prairie Gardens where they are kicking off their berries, brews, and barbecues. And ciders. And later in the show, I'll be talking with Stacy about all the events going on over the next few weeks. Also coming up on the show, what makes the perfect rose? We'll be also giving you some information about a new local pest, the Japanese beetle. But coming up first, flowering shrubs. Well, I'm out here at the beautiful Egan Gardens and I'm with uh, Ellen Egan. And so, Ellen, today I think what we're gonna do is talk about blooming shrubs, some which have already bloomed, some which are blooming now, and some blooming in the future. So let's jump right in. What have you got for us? Well, blooming right now, we have an Escalonia. There are a number of different kinds, but this one, Pride of Donard, is particularly pretty shiny pink. They're evergreen. Right. Um, and it's something different from rhodes and azaleas because right. we see a lot of those. We love them. They grow well here, but we need a little something different. Sometimes. And they do have a pretty long bloom time, too. Very so they, long, they go yeah. on for weeks and weeks. Yeah, that's stunning. So, Ellen, I love, I love that plant, but this lime green foliage is stunning to me. That is Anabelia. That's one of those that's still to come on the blooms. But while you're waiting for the flowers, it's got gorgeous right. foliage. And it does keep most of its foliage most of the winter. Wonderful. And it's one of those bee-friendly plants. I mean, you see those in bloom and the bees are just All over swarming it. to yeah. it. And they have a very long bloom season starting in mid to late summer and going way through the fall. Well, and, you know, I'm talking about plants with beautifully colored leaves, this, this dark leaf thing is breathtaking to me. And isn't that great with it? And right. they bloom at completely different times. This mm. is one that's already done its blooming for the year. This is a loripetalum, or Chinese fringe flower. I, I like loropetalum right. better. It flows off the it top. It does. And it has these rose-colored flowers that are like little fringes. I guess that's where yeah. the fringe flower name comes from. Very early in the spring. But again, great foliage for interest, even when it's not in bloom. Right, so when, yeah, when it's not blooming, it still has some beautiful interest. Mm -hmm. Of course, I seem to recognize this. Tell me about it. That is one of many hydrangeas. This is a hydrangea paniculata. So hydrangeas are to summertime what rhododendrons and azaleas are to springtime. It's the Wonderful. flower yeah. that there's the most <laughs> of, that everybody loves, the good old traditional ones. And you know, you see the big pink and blue mop heads, yeah, as we yeah, call yeah. them. But there are other really cool hydrangeas too. Hydrangea paniculata, this one is called fire and ice, wow. I guess because of the red stems and then it's gonna have the white flowers. There used to be just PG, yeah, uh, hydrangea. Yeah. You know, and they had the big poofy brown white flowers. But you know, a lot of breeders have done some really cool have, work yeah. with them, coming up with different colors. The colors that the flowers shade into as they fade are pretty instead of just being exactly. ugly. It really extends the beauty of the bloom with those changes mm -hmm. that occur too. Yeah, because those right. are not actually petals that fall off. Right. They're bracts that stay on and just kind of add, add to itself over and over again. Yeah, you're right about that. I, I recognize the Wygela, but talking about things that, the, that our industry has done to plants, they've come up with a lot of cool ones. Yeah, big old-fashioned Wygelas are these big <laughs> strappy leggy things and you're cutting them back out of the driveway and off of the walkway. This is a very nice little one called, oh, and where's its name, Checkmark Trilogy. What a name. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's a beautiful pink flower and a nice compact plant. Yeah, because they can get quite big and the newer compact ones tend to stay smaller. Yeah. So that, that's a benefit of them. They, they uh, fit in the new small yards that's right, better. That's right. And I see something tucked away on the other side of that Wygela oh. down low. What, oh. what are you trying to get in there? <gasps> oh, <laughs> well, you know, We'll call it a shrublet or a sub shrub, but heathers are wonderful little things. And we tend to think of the English heathers that bloom in um, 
early spring or late winter. Right. I mean, some start in November and go through April. Yeah. But this is an Irish heather that blooms in May and June. Gets a little taller than the English heathers, has the pretty big bells. There's some really uh, bright purple ones too. Right, right, yeah, those are beautiful. And then of course, speaking of, of summer passion of blooms, we've got to end with this one. Tell me about it. Another hydrangea, incredible. And it's got the biggest white They ball really flowers. are huge, aren't yeah. they? They're massive. <laughs> yeah. So you got to have an incredible in your yard. I mean, even if it is a pretty big size plant and you got to take something else out to put it in. Right. It's okay to change. You can there's, change. There's no shame in that, is there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the, once you see the bloom size of them and they're, they're, they really do take your it is incredible yeah. yeah I mean it's amazing so there you have it you know there's so many things and gardening for us passionate gardens it goes on all year long so we uh, if you think I, I might need some blooming shrubs come on out here to uh, to Ellen's place Eden gardens pick up some and really make your bloom time last all season long thank you so much Ellen. thank you William Since 1982, The Wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, The Wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Since 1926, Bonide has worked with homeowners to make their homes and gardens beautiful. If you have a garden problem, Bonide has the answer. Worried about mosquitoes ruining your barbecue? With Mosquito Beater from Bonide, your worries are over. The Mosquito Beater products kill all stages of the mosquito life cycle. Protect your family and enjoy your summer with Mosquito Beater. Visit Bonide.com to find a local retailer and to download your free Bonide Problem Solver app for your iPhone or Droid. Subaru Garden Days returns to Capital Subaru in Salem. Join us for a day of food, fun, and garden excitement. Select garden vendors join William and Judy on the parkway from 11 to 3. That's Subaru Garden Days June 8th at Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. Build a beautiful home inside and out at French Prairie Perennials. Inside, we have just the right creative elements to complete your decor. We offer an oasis of unusual, nature-inspired garden and home gifts and accessories. Outside, choose from our wide selection of unique dwarf conifers and sparkling companion plants. French Prairie Perennials, located between Woodburn and Wilsonville. Take exit 278 to Aurora and French Prairie Perennials. There's a new pest in town, it's the Japanese beetle, and I'm with Jessica from the Department of Agriculture who's going to really educate us more about this pest. So tell us a little bit about this Japanese beetle, where are you finding it? So right now the main infestation is in the Bethany Cedar Mill area, about 3,000 acres. And so why should we be concerned about this? Oh, there's many reasons to be concerned about the Japanese beetle. Uh, the three main areas that we're concerned about are agricultural sector, our natural resources, and private, private property such as parks, uh, individual re and individual residences. And so we're out here in the Bethany area, and so we're in a park, and behind us is a community garden, and so we see one of your traps here. So tell us about why we would maybe see these traps. Yeah, so these traps are how we, how we find where the Japanese beetle is, and it's a green funnel trap. It uses two um, lures. This is a floral lure, so it smells like roses, and rose bushes are one of the main preferred hosts of the Japanese beetle so both male and females are highly attracted to it. 
This little orange insert is a pheromone lure, so it smells like female beetles. So male beetles are highly attracted to this. So if there's any Japanese beetle in the area, they'll be highly attracted to this trap. They'll fly, hit the trap and fall down. And they're kind of clumsy, so they're not able to fly or crawl out of it. And our trappers throughout the season will come and look inside this trap to see if there's beetles. And so you can kind of like track where they are. Yes, yes. So then how do they affect our plants? Yeah, so the Japanese beetle, they are not picky eaters. Mm -hmm. They eat over 300 different plant species. Pretty much everything we like, our grass, turf, ornamental plants, our agricultural crops. And so they, they negatively impact plants two ways. When they're in larval form, they're under the ground eating the roots of plants and causing them to either yellow or die back. And as adults, they skeletonize leaves of plants. So that what that means is they eat all the nice fleshy bits of the plant and the leaf. And again, that causes severe damage to our personal plants and our agricultural crops. Uh, and so this is June. And so would we be seeing them now in our garden? Because we, could we see them? So right now they're almost getting ready to emerge. The last two years they emerged right around June 17th and 18th. So we again expect them to be emerging out of the ground as adults mid-June. So that's when you might start seeing them on your plants. Uh, and so then what can we do as gardeners and we notice them? Is there something that we can help with? Yeah, definitely. Um, if you're in the treatment area, you can kill them. <laughs> you can squash them. Um, you can put them in soapy water. And that's if you're in the treatment area because we know that there's Japanese beetles in that area. If you're outside the treatment area, it's essential to let the Oregon Department of Agriculture know that you found the Japanese beetle because we want to know if they're spreading outside where we know they are because it's essential for us to treat those areas to not allow them to keep spreading. So Jessica, what is the hope for the future? So we have had success, some success in reducing the Japanese beetle population. Between 2017 and 2018, we reduced the population by roughly 34%. Wow. And that was a direct result from our treatment. Um, so that is in the right direction. However, it's still going to be an uphill battle. We're not, definitely not out of the woods yet. Um, we found over 17,000 beetles last year and that's that's a huge amount even with that reduction. So we really depend on this community here in the Bethany Cedar Mill area. Their outpouring of support has been incredible and we need to continue that momentum and support for this program to help us eradicate this horrible invasive insect. Uh, so we can go to a website and get all that information, help with that, and we're gonna have that on the Garden Time website. You can get that. There's gonna be an email that you can contact. And really, we need lots of researchers all around the area oh, to yes. help. And we can really help you guys with your job. Yeah, the more eyes out there and contacting us, the better. And that website is japanesebeetlepdx.info. And so we'll have that on the screen. We'll also have it on our website so you can get all that information and really help out. Well, thanks so much. Thanks for all you yeah, do. Yeah, thank you. Keep, keep your eyes open out there. <laughs>
Create a beautiful living space both inside and out with the help of Terracasa. Outside, you'll find pottery, fountains, and decor to make your garden unforgettable. And inside, there are home furnishings and just the right accents to make your home warm, inviting, and most importantly, comfortable. Terracasa has a huge selection of merchandise to fit any home or budget. Plus, we still have all the unique and distinctive gifts that you have come to expect from Terracasa. Terracasa in downtown Damascus. Subaru Garden Days returns to Capital Subaru in Salem. Join us for a day of food, fun, and garden excitement. Select garden vendors join William and Judy on the parkway from 11 to 3. That's Subaru Garden Days, June 8th at Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. I don't know about you, but I love strawberries, and I love to have them right on my deck. So I'm with Sarah from Portland Nursery, and she's going to help us to plant up this huge planter. Yes. So what is this? Well, this is a very large strawberry <laughs> planter, um, but the strawberry planters have a unique um, trade like marker, I guess what you would yeah. call it. Little cups so that the strawberries can come out and trail over the side, and you can get kind of maximum capacity for your pots. Um, so this is great for a patio. Sure. or anywhere, but especially like by the front door, you can just pick some off and <laughs> eat them while you're coming in or going out. Sarah, I noticed this PVC pipe, so what is that for? Yeah, so this is a genius idea that our general manager had, which is to um, take a PVC pipe, cap the bottom, drill holes in the side, and stick it down the middle, so it helps to water a little bit oh, easier. Oh, I know sure. my strawberry pots, have I have trouble with watering sometimes. Um, so this you'll fill up with water down the center, and it'll That's evenly beautiful. distribute into the plants um, because the tall shape really makes it kind of hard. Very much. And so I saw a coffee filter too. So what did we use this for? Um, so that goes in the bottom ah. of the pot to keep all of the uh, soil from leaking out. Uh -huh. Saw that on Garden Time as one of the tips of the yes. week a few years ago and we still use it. So Excellent. And really for slugs not to be able to get up too because sometimes they true. can and that's yes. really bad. Yes. So what kind of plants do you have for us? What variety? Yes, um, so I chose the TriStar variety mm -hmm. of strawberry. I chose that because it's day neutral, which means that it's going to just keep producing a steady supply of, of strawberries, like a little handful. And that's what you want, because I want to be out there all the time picking them out. And so when you come to the store, you might see this in a pot, and there's really multiple plants in here. It's not just one big plant. Yes, there's 10 strawberry plants in there. Um, and we have ours for $9.99. Uh, a lot of places sell them for cheaper. So you're going to get a way better deal if you buy them this way. And look at all of them in there. So we just want to take them apart? Yes, that's the number one question I get from people <laughs> is, how do I get them all out? And I say, it's really easy. You just dump it out. And once you do, they're pretty... You know, you can really oh, yeah, see where the distinction is. You just gently kind of tease them apart and plant each one. Um, if you were doing it in the ground, you'd want them about a foot apart. Okay. With these, um, you just put them in the holes and a few at the top. Perfect. Yeah, they're really coming apart and nice roots on those. Yeah. Very nice. So we kind of filled this up with organics, um, soil from E.B. Stone, and you want to start at the bottom and go up. You don't want to fill it all with soil, correct? Correct. All right. So you can get the roots down in there. All right. Sarah, while you finish teasing out those plants, give me one and I'll get started. All right. So what we want to do is just kind of lay them in the cups and then push the roots all the way into the center? Mm-hmm. Excellent. Yep. And you're going to cover that with a little bit more soil. All right. Uh, so we'll kind of pot these up. All right. And did you add anything else? Yeah, we put some Sure Start, use that on everything, and then um, some slow release organic fertilizer. Beautiful. So what we're going to do is finish filling up all these cups with the strawberry plants, and we're going to go layer by layer, and then we'll finish the top, and we'll be back in a couple minutes to show you. Now that was pretty easy. It wasn't taking that much time at all. Yes. Um, yeah, definitely now all you have to do is find a nice sunny spot, uh, at least like six hours of sun a day, and keep it really well watered. And then I noticed that you left a lot of room here. There's a kind of a, the soil is down from the lip of the pot. Yeah, that's to keep the, the water in there as well so it doesn't just run right off the edges. Uh, but then again, we'll water it down the center too. So. Yeah, and really you have that nice target there. So it's nice mm -hmm. that it sticks up a little bit. Yeah. If you're interested in building this kind of container, or Sarah, really, you have other containers too. Yeah, we have lots of different types of strawberry pots, um, and you can even do a hanging basket, I think we said. Well, you can go to either of the Stark Street or the Division Store. You can get your pot, you can get soil, and they have a wide selection of strawberries. So really visit them soon so you can have strawberries this summer. Thanks so much, Sarah. Thanks.
Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. So I talked to some of the people here and they were giving me a pretty, a pretty good deal on trading my truck in. So then I went home and got her and I said, okay, come pick out a Subaru. I felt like the entire process was transparent and that they were really honest and open with us about everything and that made it easier to want to purchase from Capital. I think they want to keep, you know, loyal customers and I never got that from any other dealership. Capital isn't on the parkway, they are the parkway. Peonies, bold and beautiful, an old favorite but ever new, and perfect for your garden. At Adelman Peonies, you'll find hundreds of different peonies, bush, ito, and tree peonies covering 20 acres. Come stroll the display garden, then find a special plant or bouquet to take home. Join us any day of the week for beautiful color or weekends for special events. Adelman Peonies is just east of I-5 at exit 263 on Brook Lake Road or online at peonyparadise.com. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Your center for home and garden decor, Garden Gallery Ironworks has everything you need to make your home a showcase. For the inside, we have a great selection of Kelly Ray Roberts items and our farmhouse style department is full of one-of-a-kind gifts. For the outside, we have arbors, trellises, planting beds, and garden decor. Everything to make your neighbors jealous. Check out our new website and then come visit us in Hubbard. Garden Gallery Ironworks. At Sagawa Nursery, we talk about going beyond the ordinary. Whether it's new and exciting varieties of plants and shrubs, to a wide selection of unique Japanese maples, or our great collection of tools, garden products, and Asian-themed gifts. We can help transform your garden into something extraordinary. Come in and let us make your garden a showcase. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary. Well, I am at French Prairie Gardens with Stacy, and Stacy, this is the kickoff weekend for Berries, Brews, and Barbecue. How much fun? Yes, we're so excited. We're in our 10th year this year, and we're just so ready for lots of fun. Yeah, so this is my favorite part, is the berries. Oh, yes, yeah. So this weekend will be a great weekend to come and pick strawberries. They're just finally all starting, and it's going to be great. We have you pick strawberries. Fun. You can fill up a bucket, bring the family, take a tractor wagon ride out to the field, do lots of fun activities, fun. and of course, we have beer and cider available and lots of barbecue and lots of beer I know that you know you want to come for strawberries but how much how many taps you got we have over 20 different oh, ciders and <laughs> beers available wow. and we have 13 different breweries and cideries that are participating this year that is amazing and the food is always so wonderful oh yeah we have all different kinds of barbecue we have a barbecue plate we also have a uh, pit chicken available mm. and of course those goodies from the bakery wonderful wonderful yes yeah lots of strawberry shortcake and Mm. all sorts of goodies. Yummy. And then what's new this year? So this year we're going to do a benefit concert on the Saturday mm. of Father's Day weekend and it's great because it helps a cause that's near and dear to our mm. hearts. M's Fight Foundation which was formed in memory of my sister mm -hmm. that passed away and we help local people fighting cancer. So we are partnering with Silver Moon Brewing and their F Cancer IPA and we just want to celebrate everybody who's doing the fight and benefit oh. everybody. It's such a fun event, but you're really helping a lot of people. Oh yeah, the whole festival actually raises money for the foundation. A portion of the proceeds goes oh. towards the foundation, mm -hmm. all of our beer sales. So if you can't make it for the benefit concert, feel free to come anytime, have a beer and cider, and you're helping. Oh, that is great. And so tell us again about the dates. Yes, it's this weekend, so June 1st and 2nd and then the 8th and 9th next weekend, and then Father's Day weekend the 15th and 16th. Ah, oh, and I forgot, camping. Oh yes, we're having camping this year. <laughs> it's going to be great. It's along with our benefit concerts. You can come in on Friday, you can spend all weekend Aww. with Dad, and you can camp on the farm and come in and enjoy all the fun festivities that we have going on at the festival. Oh my gosh, there's just so much to do. So if you have any more questions, go to our website. We'll click over their website or their Facebook page and really kind of come out with the whole family and support M's Fight Foundation and just have a great time. Thanks so much. Yep. Thanks, Judy.
Whoa, 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 whoa. What, What's what? up, Ron? Hold on, William. I got your tip of the week. Oh, okay. Okay, Ron, what is this tip of the week? Well, the tip of the week is anytime you've got a large shrub or tree, in this case, in an open air vehicle, you want to make sure you lay it down. Most trees come with a stake. Make sure that stake's what's on the truck tailgate there, just like so. And the reason that we do that is because, you know, if you're driving home, you might be going 50 miles an hour, and that is technically a tropical windstorm on these plants. That's right. So then also I see a couple of bags of stuff down here. What, what are those for? Those have two purposes. Planting mix for your new tree, and we have a mulch chair to mulch around it. Uh huh. And both will hold your tree in place, keep well, it from rolling around. You know, there, there, there it is, and there you have it. And if you want to make sure that you're getting your plants home safely in an open air truck, be sure to lay them down, and you'll get them home beautifully. That's right. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. The Rose Festival is a tradition for families in Oregon, just like Portland Nursery. For over a hundred years, the Rose Festival and Portland Nursery have brought beauty to our city and our gardens. Whether you're looking for something new or an old favorite, we have all the right plants to make your backyard your favorite destination. We even have the official Rose Festival rose available at our stores. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. At 50th and Stark and 90th and Division. In the summer months, water use can double or triple due to outdoor watering. Here are three simple tips to help save water and money this summer. Set your sprinklers so that they're watering your lawn and plants and not the pavement. Water early in the morning or later in the evening when temperatures are cooler. Group plants with similar water, shade, and sun needs together. For more water conservation information and tips, check out the Regional Water Providers Consortium at www.conserveh2o.org. A vintage flea returns to Margie's Farm and Garden for our summer market. Browse over 50 vendors with all things vintage, antique, repurposed, and handmade. Enjoy food vendors, product demonstrations, and hands-on crafts. You can also take home a beautiful plant, basket, or planter from Margie's huge selection. Shop all day from 9 to 5 with free admission. Check out our Facebook page or website for all the details. That's a vintage flea at Margie's Farm and Garden. We'll see you there. Join us for Berries, Brews, and Barbecue, now happening three weekends in June, featuring Oregon Craft Ciders and Brews and Barbecue. Enjoy barbecue. You pick strawberries, hay rides, live music, and much, much more. It's farm fun for the whole family at French Prairie Gardens. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. We're filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit 5, east of Salem. Well, it's the Portland Rose Festival time, and I'm with Rich Bear from the Rose Society, and we're going to talk to you about the perfect rose. So, Rich, you all sponsor, the Society sponsors the Spring Rose Show, and so you have how many entries usually come every year? Uh, I've averaged them over the last 20 years, and we usually get about 13 to 1,400 individual wow. entries, sometimes higher, sometimes lower, depending upon the weather. And, and so what are the judges looking for? This is a beautiful rose bush here. So what do you look for? Basically, when all the rules are set up to have what we think is a beautiful rose, the most beautiful rose win. And there's a lot of things that go into that. The Mostly, if you look at a rose as a non-judge, you'd say, well, that's a, a beautiful flower. Or you'd say, you know, if you looked at this one, you'd say, <laughs> and it's not a beautiful that's one. <laughs> not, not, not so good, you know. Right. Um, You're looking at color, form? We're looking at the, if the color is right for the, uh, the variety of the rose. Uh, we're looking for the form, uh, the way the rose is opening up, um, the 
center is uh, an important feature. A lot of roses have more than, they have a very, what we call a confused center. There'll be a lot of petals in the center that don't act as a spiral away from the center. And so it, it's, as a judge, it becomes very difficult because you could have 10 or 15 roses, which are absolutely stunningly beautiful. And we, we can only pick one. Oh, sure. And uh, we fight. <laughs> After the fact, we go, how did you guys pick that one, you know? And, and then, do you, sorry, do you have to bring um, foliage too? Uh, generally speaking, we would like to, and I'm going to cut this rose here okay. and I'll hold it in my hand here. Uh, if you can, when you, when you bring it to a show, oh, wow. cut something that might be 14 to 18 inches tall. Now, there, there's a rule in this, you can always make it shorter <laughs> but you can't make it longer no, later, okay? Uh, although there are ways to make a stem longer if you actually need to. <laughs> well, that's a secret. We won't get into that. So the foliage <laughs> is also an important part okay. of the judging. Uh, the stem and foliage, the, the, the leaves are clean. Um, I had a incidents once where I, I would have won the best in show, but the judges came back and said, you know, if you just turned, had cleaned the bird dew off the leaf, it would have done better. <laughs> and, and, and that's, I'm, it's an important I, I'm tip. very <laughs> lax. I'm very lax in, in what I do at rose shows. I just want people to see the beauty of the flowers that I see. And the day before the show, I walked through the garden and anything that looks like this would be an outstanding example in my garden for something that's beautiful. And that's what I look for. And I, will take up to 40 stems to the rose wow. show. Wow, so you can bring multiple entries, one person. Yes. And really anybody can come. You don't have to belong to the society. No. You just have to bring your roses. And then what day do we bring them to the Lloyd Center? I better refer to that oh, right date here okay. because if I say it, I <laughs> better be right. Thursday right? Uh, from 6.30 in the morning till 9.30. Um, and down at Lloyd Center, and there'll be directions how to get to yes, the space. Yes, um, if you get if you get to Lloyd Center, you'll find us. I'll <laughs> okay. tell you that we have signs. And then, out. really, this is over 130 years that this has been going on. Yes, it's the longest in the world. Wow. And uh, and we, then, who started it? What's the history? The very first row show was sponsored by and put on by Mrs. Henry Pittock of the Pittock Mansion fame. Uh, she had traveled to Europe. And she had experienced a rose show there, and she just thought it would be a, a neat thing to do back here. And so she set up a tent in her backyard, uh, downtown Portland, and had her friends, who all had gardens and gardeners, uh, bring roses to her backyard uh, under a tent. And uh, It was a charity event, wasn't it? That, that's what I've read, although mm -hmm. the history, every time you read history, <laughs> you get a little you different band on. And she said there, it was a dime per admission. She said she made a lot more money than she expected to. Uh, <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> it's always good to have a successful event. Right. And it's been carried on for 100, 100 over 130 years. So Rich, so if anybody can enter, what kind of tips do you give them? What kind of advice? The most important advice to anybody who wants to enter is to actually do it. <laughs> uh, it it's hard to get ourselves motivated to do things. Uh, our row show is open to anybody that wants to come. We have special areas and people uh, at it. Uh, this is novice tables oh. for people that have never been there. And we'll have experienced people who can walk you through every stage of how to get your roses into the show. And if you don't know what they are and the name's important, uh, we'll try very hard to identify the roses for you so that you can enter them in the show. Uh, but, but other than that, it's, it's open. I remember the first time I did, I was scared to death. Oh, sure, sure. Because anything new is, has that uh, of course. feel to it. But uh, you're sharing the beauty of your garden, which is, uh, my garden, I say, it's always open because I love to have people walk through oh, it, it because they enjoy it. Right. And, um, and I enjoy other people's gardens as well. Definitely. But, but the beauty of the rose is just something unique, and we're giving people an opportunity to see lots of them. Definitely. And really, if you don't want to enter, you don't have a rose to enter, go see this. It is. It's amazing. There's just hundreds and hundreds of roses in one place that you could see at the Lloyd Center. So if you need more information, go to the Rose Society website. All of the information on how to enter is there and also where to go and just view it. Have a great show. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for allowing us time to go in the air. Stop and smell a rose, hear a child laugh, see the beauty that is Oregon. 
You will find all this and more at the Oregon Garden in Historic Silverton. 400-year-old oaks, edible landscapes, a children's garden. Spend a day leisurely strolling the garden or attend one of many garden events or classes. You can even extend your stay with a night at the Oregon Garden Resort. Enjoy the garden that showcases the diverse botanical beauty of our state, the Oregon Garden. Subaru Garden Days returns to Capital Subaru in Salem. Join us for a day of food, fun, and garden excitement. Select garden vendors join William and Judy on the parkway from 11 to 3. That's Subaru Garden Days June 8th at Capital Subaru. Your way on the parkway. Join us for Berries, Brews, and Barbecue, now happening three weekends in June, featuring Oregon Craft Ciders and Brews and Barbecue. Enjoy Barbecue. You pick strawberries, hay rides, live music, and much, much more. It's farm fun for the whole family at French Prairie Gardens. The health and beauty of your garden starts from the ground up, and healthy soils begin at Grimm's Fuel. For the best in garden mulch, blended soils, and bark dust, choose Grimm's. U-Haul delivered or installed, Grimm's can do it. And if you're looking for a new lawn, Grimm's can do that too with our special lawn installation service. Grimm's is also the area's largest recycler of yard debris. The foundation for a healthy garden begins at Grimm's Fuel. 1,112? 1,113. William, what? what are you counting? I'm counting all of our wonderful friends on Facebook. And we invite everyone to go to Facebook and like us and follow us. All you have to do is go to Gardentime.tv and hit the Facebook icon, which is in the top right hand corner. It's the best place to get the most updated information on Garden Time. So all you have to do is click us and like us. At Garland Nursery, you'll find top quality plants. Four generations of garden know-how. Fun and fantastic garden decor. And the best in garden supplies. Come visit us at Garland Nursery. Since 1937, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. So I am standing here with Diana of Wabra Farms and Nursery, and you know, there is a really fun thing happening. Tell me about it. So today from nine to five, we have our Artisan Weekend, and we have 13 fabulous artists that are bringing everything from acrylic pores to watercolors to oil paintings. We have some glasswares, some jewelry, some felting projects, and some soaps, and various other projects that are coming. So really, everybody that's going to be here on some level has, has creativity involved in, the, in this art. Exactly. Right? Wonderful. Exactly. So we have some fabulous art coming, and they are going to be here. It's going to be set up like market style. So each vendor is basically their own shop. So it's a great way for people to peruse through the greenhouse and wow. see the variety of art that we have. So you really have completely redone this greenhouse for this event. Oh, we you? have. Yeah, We've yeah. stripped it completely out, and we have vendors that are set up and we have added some nursery product as well, right. just to soften it up. Right, right. And so then I, I'm going to make an assumption, you correct me if I'm wrong, there's gonna be beverages, there's gonna be food as well. Tell me about that. Well, of course. You know, I have to keep my vendors happy <laughs> That's too, right? right? <laughs> so we have Trinity Vineyards coming, and they have wine by the glass and by the nice, bottle. Nice. We have the Beehive Tap House coming, and they're gonna bring some microbrews and some hard ciders as well. Wonderful. And then we also, of course, you know, have to keep OLCC happy. Yes, always. So we have the food trucks coming. Nice. And so the food trucks are here. And so we will have the spud bus, which is going to do lots of baked potatoes and Ooh. salads and that style. We have hooked on foods, which is going to be hamburgers and skewers. Wow. And we have Ken's Dog House bringing a variety of different assorted foods as well. So really, not only will you get a great selection of, of wonderful creative ideas selling their wares, you're going to get some great food oh, as yes. well. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And feel free to come and stay a while because we'll have tables and chairs nice. to nice. meet up and socialize with family and friends. Well, and you know how much I love uh, hanging baskets and plants that I purchased here for my oh, own yes. place. Yes. Uh, but you have a plant sale going on we as well. Do. Don't you tell me about we that do. too? So we have a fabulous special on our baskets today and tomorrow as well. And so that special will be buy two baskets and get one free. And 
I'm assuming that this little cutie's for sale as well, huh? He is, yeah. <laughs> so we'll have some fabulous little garden art ideas Wonderful. as well. So this is one of the three blind mice. Well, yes, it is. And I, I don't know where the other two are. <laughs> I, can't, I can't find them. <laughs> so listen, this sounds like such a blast. And we love coming out here at Wapri anyway. So for more information, go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you over to their website. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, I can tell you, I am delighted to be out at Margie's Farm and Garden here, and I'm with Margie and her entire family right now. <laughs> so, you know, Margie, so long ago we started with, with strawberry recipes, and we did this wonderful pie years ago, and it's became a really popular segment still on the show. Then last year, you introduced taking strawberries and making a daiquiri, which means you can freeze strawberries and use them for daiquiris year-round easily. Oh, yes. Great use for strawberries year-round. So tell me, what are we doing with this recipe? Today, we are making strawberry ice cream. Ooh. Homemade strawberry ice cream, easy enough for even you, William, or the kids to make. <laughs> well, you know, I have to say, I know there's no ice cream maker. No, so no, it's done all without an ice cream maker, just with stuff you have at home. Wow. Easy to do. And is this is this wonderful beauty here going to be telling us how? how Emily is Emily here is going to be demonstrating and showing us how to do it. Wonderful. Take yeah. a, take over, Emily. Okay, so we're gonna start by getting our plastic bags. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna open. hold this open for just you, a, right? A quart size Ziploc bag. Yes. Uh, and then we have one cup half and half. We're gonna just dump right in there. One cup half and half. Yes. Then we're gonna do uh, so we're going to do our sugar, actually, which is two tablespoons oh, of sugar. Oh, that's not much at all. Yes, not much at all. Uh, then we're going to do our one teaspoon vanilla extract. Okay. And then our strawberries, which we're doing half a cup of smashed strawberries. And so, it, yeah, I was going to say, it looks like you smashed them up. Or yes, something. and then we strain them a little bit so that it doesn't get too liquidy. Okay. So when we actually, when they actually freeze. Wow. Then we're gonna uh, close that up and try to get the air out of the bag. The air out. Boy, you're you're taking a risk on me, aren't you? Okay, yeah. so I'll squish it down a little bit and then pull this across. All right. Perfect. All right. So you can shake that up a little bit. Just mix, to mix it, it up. Yeah. Mix, mix all the up. ingredients. Okay. All right. Now. And we're gonna put it in our ice right here. We have a ice with uh, two uh, Ziploc. And why is there bags. two? Just in case if we if it breaks or uh, if something cracks or yeah. well, okay. Just so in set case. that in there, and then what else? Then we're going to do our half cup of rock salt just on top. Just, just pour it right in. It. Okay, just like you would make ice cream in a machine yes. with the okay. And then just I like sealed that. this first one up, and I got the crew here waiting to shake it, so I'm I'm going to make sure that I get it right. And then whoops, I didn't get that one right. All right. Then I seal up the other one. And then what is the process then after we seal them up? Then we just shake it for about five minutes or that's until all. it's frozen. Yeah, that's all. That's all you do all. is shake and shake and shake. So I've got this sealed up now. God willing, I've done it right. And then I'm going to hand it over to the automation of shaking. Here you go. Shake away. Okay, now, whew, I am tired from shaking all that. So here you go. Now, now, what what are we doing with it now? Uh, we're taking it out of the bags and just wiping it down a little bit. Oh, it's already it's already firming up. Yes, we're just gonna wipe it down because it had some salt water on it. And then after you wipe it down, it's it's literally ready to eat, right, yes. Emily? Yes. Already. So for this, we're gonna just cut a hole in the corner. You make it a server. That's how you serve it now. Yes. <laughs> then you can take a bowl. You can just squeeze it out. Wow. Like in the last batch. <laughs> right. Look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? And that, that is amazing. Wow, and then are you going to put a strawberry on it? Yes. <laughs> Look at that. Wonderful. Now, do, do I get to actually taste it? Yes. Oh, of course. Yeah. Here's your spoon. 
And so while I'm tasting this, tell me, oh, these are hood strawberries, right? So these are hood strawberries. We're in the middle of picking our hood strawberries, which are definitely a favorite among customers. And then about how much longer time do you have for strawberries? We have about days? two more weeks of strawberries. So we have them already picked here, or there's also you pick if you feel ex excited about coming and picking your own. I had to take a taste. I had to take a taste of a number two because it is absolutely really good. Isn't it fantastic it for is. like and five minutes just, of work? Right. Yeah. For just, well, if you have four kids, it's five minutes of work. For me, it'd be thirty <laughs> minutes of work. But absolutely delicious. Well, you know, every every time we come out here, it's fun because we always promote the plants. But then we love to promote what you can do with the wonderful produce you can get here as well. So for more information on this recipe or any of the recipes, go to GardenTime.tv. We'll click you over to their website. And you can bring it all up. Thank you, Margie. Thank you kids appreciate it cheers cheers <laughs>
Okay, I got them all in here. A couple tricks. One of the things I like to do with some of the sedums is just give them a little tip on the ends. That gets them to fill out a little better. Also, this is just moss, so there's not a lot of nutrients in there. So when you go to water it, water it just like we did before, but add a little bit of water-soluble fertilizer in there and just dunk it down. And then you've got it. And for more information and other projects, go to www.baumanfarms.com. So I am out here at the Oregon Garden and we are standing in the conifer section of the Oregon Garden and I'm here with Doug who is a part of the American Conifer Society, right? Yes. How long have you been with them? I've been a member for about 15 of their 30 years. Wow, wow. Yeah. And then you've also, almost from the beginning when this garden started, you've also been volunteering and working here as well. The conifer garden curatorship, if you will. Uh -huh was handed to me my second year of nice. volunteering here. I was very pleased about that. And so I wonder back then, because I remember looking at this place when it first opened, how many conifers roughly were put into this garden at the time? I'd say in the neighborhood of 300 or maybe a little less than that. And are all of those still available to be seen or have some of them been changed out and taken away? Some now? of them were, uh, fast growing, large trees that were, I deemed inappropriate for a one acre right, garden. Right, yeah, because that can right. get covered quickly with big trees. That's right, <laughs> you bet. So then what is the amount that are in here now currently about? Uh, in the neighborhood of 900 or wow. so trees. Wow, and then tell me what it is that you like about this conifer garden out here. What, what is it that you find interesting and intriguing? Well, I enjoy uh, doing a garden where I can meet people. I think m most gardeners are would like to show people their garden and this I feel like this is my garden though right. it, the ownership truly is not mine but it's uh, I like to help people find trees that they're interested. Right, right. And you, you have so much knowledge about them that you've, you've kind of become an expert in the field of coniferous plants, so that helps people get the information that they're seeking to begin with and get it right. On some level. Yes. On some level. Yeah. Well, here's one level. Yeah. Yeah. We t Tell me about this plant behind you a little bit. We call it a cedar. It isn't though, right? No, this isn't. This displays a, a typical um, scale, overlapping scale foliage, which we find on cypresses. Uh -huh. This is an Oregon native cypress called Cupressus nutcatensis. And it uh, works out very nicely for garden applications it's because really it's rather narrow, has a, uh, a small enough uh, yeah. footprint that it can be used in a home garden. And then right behind me though, this actually is a true cedar, right? All cedars, of which there are arguably either three or four, We'll leave that to the experts. Uh, have needles. They have bunches of needles. And they're they're pokey. They have sharp <laughs> sharp tip needles. Yeah. And this happens to be uh, a deodar cedar, which is uh, native to Western Himalayas, and Northern India. So then, Doug, do you think that the confusion is just comes from a lack of of understanding of the names of the plants? I think it's just information that was handed down. Right, right. And, yeah. and so, and, and you're one of those people that helps us clarify all that, right? <laughs> if, you're, if you think it's important, I'm happy to, to help uh, out. <laughs> help out with that, right. Well, you also have another plant that we're gonna talk about, so let's take a walk over there and all right. talk about that one. Okay, Doug, so this was the plant you wanted to, to show us, and it's because it's got an, a thing called a witch's broom on it. First yes. of all, tell me what that term means, witch's broom. It's a name that we like to use that has been outmoded by science, but it refers to a mutation on a plant that is clearly visible. Uh, this will be uh, this witch's broom represents uh, a new set of genetics that is separate from the mother plant. So then let me make it clear that I understand this is the actual plant 
that was planted to grow. Yes. This is the weirdness that happens with a witch's broom on this plant, right? Exactly. It's, uh, and do we know why that happens? Do we understand the science behind it? There are some ideas on that. I don't think there's uh, an accepted I idea yet, but we, uh, we think it might have something to do with uh, radiation with a certain wavelength of light. Wow. Wow. Since these are found a little more oft, often at elevation, uh, that would indicate some light difference. So this is a great example then right here in the conifer part of the garden on what happens in, in this process with conifer plants. This gives you an idea if you wish to find a brand new tree, what, what you should be looking for. Most brooms, even though the plant that will evolve from them might look unique. Most brooms look very similar. Huh, really? Yeah, they're all... It's kind of a clustering then, a tightness of it. It's the length of the internode. On the mother plant, two, three, four inches. On the witch's broom, Much all smaller. internodes less than an inch. Oh, that's amazing. Well, you know, yeah. I, I, could, I could stay here and talk all day with him about this stuff. I find it fascinating. So, you know, if you, if you love conifers, they have a wonderful selection out here in the conifer garden and organ garden. Uh, come on out and maybe if you're really lucky, you'll see Doug there and be able to ask him all the questions about conifers that you have. Thank you so much, my friend. Appreciate it. Thank you. We want to thank you for watching today, and we want to remind you to come out to French Prairie Gardens for berries, brews, and barbecues. It's a great event and a great cause. We also wanted to remind you that next Saturday, Garden Time will be on at 7 a.m. in the Portland area. And also next Saturday is Subaru Garden Days at Capital Subaru in Salem. It's going to be a lot of fun. We hope to see you there. So if you have any questions about today's show or past shows, you can always go to Gardentime.tv. William and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. Cheers. Cheers. Thousand one hundred and twelve, one thousand one hundred thirteen. William, what? what are you counting? I'm counting all of our wonderful friends on Facebook. And we invite everyone to go to Facebook and like us and follow us. All you have to do is go to GardenTime.tv and hit the Facebook icon, which is in the top right hand corner. It's the best place to get the most updated information on Garden Time. So all you have to do is click us and like us. I love the Jordan Kent Skill Camp. And as a busy mom, it is really nice to have time to get things done. Smile for our followers. You bet your butt next episode. Got a lot done today. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.